Come get your first look at the brand new 8th edition rulebook. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you. Taking a look at the new 8th edition rules book. And this thing is a doozy, man. It is super sweet. We got the brand new styling of this thing right here. And of course, it is a rather large book, 250 plus pages. And then it's got all the great features and everything in the Primaris Marine, which is the same as the cutout that you'll see the big six foot stand up or three. What is that, three meter, two meter stand up? <laughs> I don't do math while I'm from the States, sorry folks. <laughs> that you'll see at a lot of the gaming stores there. Now, this is the iconic uh, styling of old fourth edition with like the black border and everything like that. Kind of a return to the old way that we used to play 40K. Now, if you think about it, and we talk about this on the podcast over on the Long War, this is sort of the first edition we've seen since third edition. Because remember, it went first, fundamentally changed to second, fundamentally changed to third. From third pretty much to now, nothing's ever been invalidated. And now we have literally all of our rules that are invalidated. This is truly, I guess, the fourth, if you think about it, edition that has changed the rules. You know, if you if your books from the previous edition are no longer valid, then it is a true rules change, which I guess we can confidently say eighth edition is technically the fourth iteration of Warhammer 40K, which may explain why they use they choose to use the fourth edition styling here. It's not exact, but it's definitely inspired by fourth the old fourth edition book, which I guess came out I want to say it came out in 2000, the fall of either 2003 or 2004. I can't, I, I, I believe it was in October. So once you open this bad boy up, you'll notice there is uh, a ton of content in here. Now, do you need all this content? Uh, well, if you're a competitive player, you probably don't. And I'll be honest with you, you, you just don't. Uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the long end, short end of it, unfortunately. Now, it is a great tome of material. There is a ton of new fluff and reference in here that a lot of veteran players and and narrative players and and casual players will find very interesting but at the end of the day there's only about 20 pages that any competitive player is going to need out of this book uh at, at the drop of a hat but let's take a look at the contents just the same here so you've got the contents but don't get me wrong, I love the style of this book. I love everything about this book. I love the advancement of the storyline. I love the layout of this book. I love all the time they put in on this. But I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. And I'm not gonna tell you, hey, you have to buy this book because there isn't a whole lot in here that you absolutely 100% need that may or may not be available via downloads. And that's kind of the thing is we're still kind of waiting to see what all is coming out and everything like that. So I don't wanna tell you at this point, but I will show you exactly what you need so you can make the decision for yourself. It is a $60 rule book, 250 pages, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got all your fluff sections, which breaks it down into what we've seen with the index books here, right? So you know that there's five index books coming out for this bad boy here. So we have the two Xenos books, the two chaos or the one chaos book and the two imperium books here which line up with these fluff sections here so they're neatly kind of putting it into this packaging that we're all gonna have to understand and know about so you've got your chaos you've got your xenos and you got your imperiums this is all the fluff then it goes into internity of war which talks about all the current war zones remember we're advancing the storyline there's a excuse me, a lot going on with Ultramar, the fall of Cadia, some other stuff here that I'm not going to kind of get into quite yet, but the demons are doing their thing. Armageddon also was a victim to another demonic incursion, so there is kind of a fourth war for Armageddon kind of happening right now, because the demons kind of came back trying to bring Angron, but didn't, didn't kind of materialize i guess so that's that's a story for another day but you'll definitely have to read that one and then it gets into what a lot of players are going to be interested in the rule sections themselves so there's kind of the overview of how you set it up and that's all in your the only war section here with your uh, three different types of play you got open play narrative play match play we saw that in general's handbook for age of sigma jumps into each of those sections and explains it a little bit more. So we're going to kind of touch base and do a brief overview mostly on the match play stuff here, which is what I feel like a lot of people are going to be watching this for. So we're going to give you the basics on that. And then it gets into the advanced rules, which is like battle zones and the things that we're used to uh, if you've played 7th edition since 2013. As, as players, or perhaps veterans, I guess, by this point, you know that, hey, there's this stuff called Palanus Strike. There's this stuff called Cities of Death, Stronghold of Salt, Death from the Skies. And these give you those flavored types of rule sets to play in your game. So I like what Games Workshop did. They said, hey, we're going to invalidate some of your stuff, 
but we're still gonna give it back to you because you're familiar with it in the form of these supplements right here, which work very similar. We're not gonna super get into it in this. That's gonna be our tips and tactics and our breakdowns on a lot of these different things. But long story short, the, the best thing to do when you're taking a look at these rules is kind of suspend what you expect it to be and read it for what it is because there's a lot of things in here that are very some way more simplistic than what uh, seventh edition 40k used to be for instance you know it definitely says you don't walk through walls vehicles don't walk through walls dudes don't walk through walls and terrain features but you can spend movement to traverse over them so does that mean a tank can go up to a wall, go straight up and come down like it's Ghost Rider? Probably not. You're probably gonna have to go around. Can it go up and down a low like brick wall? Yeah, probably. Add two inches to your movement maybe. So as long as you kind of go into a, that open mindset, I feel like this game and our, and our hobby experience is gonna be uh, a better one. So let's just flip through some of the stuff here that I wanted to show you. So you've got some of the older iconic artwork, some of the stuff that we're seeing here, you know, some different things that are coming back and that we're seeing again for the first time. And then like I said, there's the, all the sections on what's happening now, like okay, here's the Imperium of Man, talk about the Asian Imperium, talk about the Dark Imperium, talk about the Astartes, all the good guys, all the bad guys, all the Xeno stuff, you know, and all of that stuff. So this is definitely worth the read. Then it gets into the war zones, like what's happening. The crux of a lot of Games Workshop Warhammer community articles where they just, you know, basically go over the material that's in this book already. But it's, you know, it's it, it's very cool because it's a first look for a lot of folks seeing it for the first time on Warhammer communities. So then we get to the back to where the uh, how to actually play the game section. This is the There Is Only War, which we're going to spend a lot of our time on in this video. We get through all this and then we go to the supplemental section, the Death from the Sky section, the multiplayers, the uh, campaign books, the appendix books, stuff uh, just a little bit more on each lore, and then the index in the back here. So this, remember the old index was multiple multiples of pages? This new index, not that big because there actually is not that much stuff in here to look up. The majority of the things are going to be, you know, in these index books under each entry here with the content. Now. We're not going to talk about the index books as much in this one. This is more for the foundation, the meat and potatoes, how you actually play the game. So playing the game, there's a couple different ways, which we talked about. Core rules, advanced rules, which are basically match playing everything we showed you with those, um, those supplement books there. You've got open play, narrative play, and your match play, which narrative play and match play pretty much revolve around Battleforge armies, exactly what you think they are. They are armies that are made using detachments. So we don't really need to talk about that. I think all of us have a firm grip on what the heck an attachment is. So here's your new data sheet cards, which uh, granted there, there actually isn't any in here. Uh, these are all gonna be in your index books or the two little books that came in your starter. They explain basically everything about it. You know, your profiles, your war gear, your weapons. Um, there's stuff called power levels, which depending on which mode of play you're using, that is just this unit. It does not take into any consideration any war gear points or anything like that. So if you play at a power level, it's possible that you might, even though you might have something at the same power level, the weapon options inside of there won't reflect the same way, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So that's just something to be aware of uh, in and of itself. Now you can, you can play games versus power level where you're not going to worry about war gear, or you can play match play where you have to add in your war gear and your weapon options, whatever it says the, the thing comes with in the points value in order to come up with your 2,000 point uh, list and things like that. Very easy stuff uh, so far. So now you're getting to the 10 pages of core rules, which we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on because, well, I guess uh, we're not going to break it down is what I'm saying. That's going to be more for another video of another day. So we've seen all this stuff verbatim. Like this stuff uh, has been featured on Warhammer Community. We've seen the pictures of it, you know, weeks out and things like that. You know, as a matter of fact, we saw a lot of these pictures many many weeks out before the books had even come out so you know it's it's really interesting that we saw you know this picture here of the new primaris marines you know stuff like that this picture here of all the new starter marines definitely came out way early from when these books were even shipped out so it almost makes you wonder hey who had these books and who was even leaking those pictures at this point right then we get back to the core rules, and that's you know just what you expect: movement phase, psychic phase, shooting phase, charge phase, fight phase, and the morale phase. Both sides have to take morale. That's kind of like a big change 
over um, the old edition. No matter what, if you have a squad and it's lost, it's taking casualties, you need to check morale. Whether whether it's your turn or, their, or your opponent's turn, you both have to check morale. So it's possible that at the end of uh, an assault, that both sides have to check morale and both sides might actually lose models and no longer have any models in the fight anymore for that particular assault, which would be kind of crazy, but it could theoretically happen, right? So you got your movement phase, and remember everything moves differently now, has different movement values, psychic phase, shooting phase, and they go down the sequence of how it all works. Now a lot of people are complaining online already after seeing these previews that there isn't a clear like, oh, so things have 360 line of sight. Well, if you read this section here on choosing targets, it doesn't necessarily say that. It kind of says, hey, you need to get down and, um, let's see, it says, it's unsure, stoop down and get a look from behind the shooting model, see if any part of the target is visible. For purposes of determining visibility, a model can see through other models in its own unit. So, you know, it's kind of like true line of sight. Does it make sense if you have a last cannon and you get down and you look where the last cannon is looking and something over here is right now, it's technically in view of the last cannon, but I'm not exactly sure that if the last cannon doesn't swivel, it could hit it. But theoretically, on a vehicle, that is the case. There's no differential between vehicles and uh, units, which could swivel on the hip to turn their last cannon to bear, so to speak, you know what I mean? So there, you're gonna have to suspend that disbelief and just read the rules for what they are to get maximum effect out of here and have fun on that tabletop, you know, and be engaging and respect you, both you and your opponent's time on the tabletop there. So then it gets uh, into the next phase here, which is exactly how to resolve your attacks and everything. And I like, I really like the Games Workshop has certain sections bolded here. Cause obviously, you know, if the manufacturer, if the author of the book bolts something, it's probably important. You probably need to read it. You know what I'm saying? Then it gets into the fight phase. Remember an attack's an attack. They're all resolved the same uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. So you, it's kind of like, this is kind of the same as over here. Charge phase, fight, uh, fight phase, and then the morale phase. And like I said, remember everybody has to kind of check there. And then it gets into transports and things just take up transport capacity, uh, but transports generally can only transport something that is an infantry model. So currently, I don't believe there is a way, like if you have a drop pod that you can put a dreadnought in a drop pod because it says it only takes infantry models and a dreadnought is a vehicle. Now there may be something coming out from Forge World in the future, but right now, be it as it may, that's kind of where we're at. As far as I have been able to ascertain from reading the books, now I may misspeak, so obviously leave it in the comments if that is not the case. Here's your example turn, and it kind of goes through all of that, like overwatch, charging, removing casualties, how wounds don't splash and carry over unless they are mortal, and then the double checking of morale at the end of the phase. So pay close attention to this example turn. If you have any questions, they may get answered there. Now, I know we're about 10, 15 minutes into this video, but this is really the crux of the matter right here. Yeah, sure, rules are great and everything like that, but it's what comes before the rules sometimes that confuses the heck out of people, right? So how do you set up your game? Well, this is how you do it. You start here under fighting a battle, okay? This is the start. You pick a warlord, he gets an ability, and then you move forward. And whatever type of battle you're playing, whether it's open, matched, or uh, narrative, the, all of that stuff is gonna be contained here. So you start here. Now there is this really great mission. This is a separate mission. This is not rules. <laughs> we made that confusion. We made that mistake on the podcast the first week. This is a mission that uses power levels instead of points. So this is a great, hey, you just got your box or hey, hey, you got some models. Okay, let's compare points values and or not points values, power levels. And let's just start playing right away. If you have a difference in power available, you can get some re-rolls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Get up and running. This is a really cool mission right here. That's really fun to play. You could technically play it with points values um, either way. You might want to start with this one just to get in the game and start playing. Now we're going to skip through the narrative and the, um, the narrative section here and the open play section here and just jump right into match play. So back here in the match play section, it's going to explain how to choose your army, how your points limits work, which is going to be in this chart right down here, up to a thousand points. You can have two detachments. Your battlefield size supposedly is supposed to be four by four and you can, the game should take up to two hours and then it goes down or, you know, up 
in, in scale and ferocity from that point right there up to an eight by four table taking three hours, 2000 to 3000 points with up to four detachments per army. Detachments are in the back of the book. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. Reinforcement points. So this is another point of conjecture currently, but the way I read it is that you set points and then you have to say in your army roster what unit you're gonna have because it says see below here. That may or may not be how it works. Read it and make your own um, I guess determination or take your own conclusion here. It does say that you can reduce reinforcement uh, the units by war gear choices and number of models, but I think you still have to say, hey, I'm bringing in a squad of bloodletters. It might only be five now, et cetera, et cetera, like that. So just kind of take a look at it right there. It's, it's mildly important to, you know, if you're using uh, dedicated reserves. Then it gets over into choose a mission. Now this is an important kind of thing here. So you can be like, okay, let's play Eternal War. Let's just play a normal way to play games. Or you can play Maelstrom. We all know Maelstrom's like the craziness where it comes to, it's very, it's a lot more involved and it's really fun if you're looking for that kind of craziness factor. But if you're looking for something a little bit more stable, you might want to go with the Eternal War table right here, which is on the, the pre, the pre uh, following pages here, okay? Objective markers, be aware that you're measuring to the center of objective markers. That's a marked change from the past. You can have any size objective, but you're measuring to the center, which you could, as we've seen in the past with Battletech, the Battletech Miniatures game, definitely became an issue at some points with a lot of gamers. So that's one of those things that not exactly sure if that is a good idea, but that's where we're at right now, so we'll see. Some specific things for match play, you need to read this right here. These are basically your rules of one, your three rules of one, kind of ported over from Age of Sigmar. Then it gets into deployment maps. You might see some familiar ones right there, some new ones as well. And then each particular mission will tell you what the victory conditions are, your first turn, who gets to choose the first turn, how long the battle is, and the deployment in and of itself. Now, a lot of these are actually the same, and then it just really goes, comes down to your uh, your victory conditions there. And there's six of those for Eternal War. And that's all we're gonna talk about there. Let's jump to Battle Forged Armies. And this is kinda new, well, not new. Detachments have been around forever. But Battle Forged Armies, you have to put everything into a detachment. So if you're playing match play, you're gonna probably take some ba a Battle Forge army, it's gonna contain detachments. Now Gone is the old battlefield role of Lord of War, In is the new battlefield role of Flyer. So that's kinda, oh excuse me, Lord of War is not gone, they just added Flyer. So this is what we used to have, and we also didn't have a dedicated transport, and now we have these two new ones. And dedicated transport is kinda interesting. A uh, Lord of War isn't like a stigma as much anymore as kind of what I meant. Uh, gone is Lord of War. So now you can see that you can pick, depending on what kind of type of game you're playing, you're playing a 2,000 point game, you're going to get two detachments. What detachments do you want to take? Well, it depends right here. There's your options. There's 12 different um, detachments to choose from. Some of them give you command benefits, which are command points, like a plus to your command points. Every army in Battleforge starts out with three command points. And then you either add or subtract based on what is going on or units that you take. Like for instance, Gilliman can give you three command points right off the bat. You put Gilliman in your army, and, and you just take a Battleforge army, you're six, you're six points to the plus right there. You're, you're six points in the black, booyah. So now, You'll also notice here that every one of these units can have a dedicated transport assigned to it as a slot, but not really a slot kind of type deal. It doesn't take up any force or organization. Now, what you do with those command points is by stratagems. During the game, you can reduce your command point total to purchase a stratagem and use it immediately, like getting a reroll, which is going to be huge in a lot of point, a lot of cases here. Always thinking about using that reroll for a specific ability. It might be a 50-50 user reroll. Hey, you get up to like 88%-ish, right? Just a simple math on a D6. Uh, you can do the counteroffensive, which is great for activating something after you get assaulted, and the insane bravery if you don't want that thing breaking off the table excuse me, if you don't want to lose a particular number of models for, for something, uh, you know, taking a lot of casualties and you need to hold the line, when you absolutely positively have to hold the line, you might want to think about insane bravery right there. All these detachments are all ready to go, just kind of got to read through them and figure out what you want to do. And then it gets into the battlefield terrain section, which we're just going to let you guys kind of take a look at when you get the book. So overall, like I said, you really don't need the whole book if you're just looking for the competitive rules, which may or may not be completely uh, and entirely part of the downloads that will be available from Games Workshop in the near future. You really just kind of need the fighting the battle 
and the only war section and the stuff about match play maybe the terrain rules here but if you do buy the starter box you get this nice cool mini handy dandy reference of the rules themselves the little dm screen kind of thing that's uh, small enough to kind of fit in your bag and it seems pretty resilient enough like it's you know it's a good good quality card kind of thing so it's up to you what you want to do i'm not going to tell you what book or what box set you need to buy especially with the limited edition stuff coming out as well uh, if you were fortunate enough to secure one of those bad boys right there but this looks to be a really solid product in the very first in a long time to a complete rewrite of the rules for warhammer 40k so i'm super stoked i hope you enjoyed my brief overview of kind of the rules and the match play that will be coming here soon to Warhammer 40k in June 17th. Now, if you like our videos, like our features here on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to comment and like what we got going on here and head on over to the longwar.net. That's the home of the battle ports for exclusive content, early access videos, and a ton of features about the new 8th edition. Become a veteran of the long war today.